Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombly's. Our two stars are named John Green. That was one of them. That was bald John Green. And we've got another one. His name is uh, Other John Green. We call him that because he's the other John Green. His, his name used to be John Bennett, but then he got married to John Green, bald John Green. And now they are both, they, they, he decided to take John Green's name. Now they're both named John Green. I'm the manager, third person, different person, also named John Green. Now, if you think this is complicated, my initial concept for this series back in 2011 when I was playing a Swindon Town was that all 11 players would be named John Green at all times, but it turned out it was very time-consuming to create players, and I got bored after two, and that's why we're here today in the last season of the Wimbley Womblies. You can see right there, we're, we're 33 points after 16 games. That's pretty good, but we're playing the third best team in England right now and that's Chelsea and they are on paper a lot better than us notably they are also a lot better than um, Stoke City who we just tied against so on the other hand we got home field advantage we're starting Rafo in goal and then uh, Cuesta Cuesta uh, Gummy and Meadsy uh, and then we got the uh, the central midfield and then up front we've got Dicko, John Green and John Green lots of you've been asking for a little bit of an update on the John Green situation uh, what's going on with the team overall you know, morale has been pretty good. This season has gone better than we expected it to, I think. Like, our goal this time... Male toilets were, were just in the background, by the way. Our goal this season is, is to win silverware. We want to win a trophy, ideally the Premier League trophy. I, I said that in a previous episode, and somebody said, spoken like a true Liverpool fan. It's true. Boy, Liverpool fans want to win the Premier League so bad. And uh, as of this recording, we have not won it, but it's looking pretty likely, over 99% chance, according to 538.com. And it is definitely something, I mean, that I've thought about most days for the last 20 years, so it would be really nice. But we're not here to talk about Liverpool. We're here to talk about AFC Wimbledon. A lot of you have been wanting squad updates, what's going on with the boys. Like I said, morale is mostly good. We've had some, uh, we, we've, we've had some, some problems some real problems with some, some guys who feel like they should be starting and are just mistaken. Like, they're just wrong about that. And I don't know how to handle that very well. Like, Liam Trotter really wants to start, and, like, he isn't good enough to start. And that's pretty much the end of it. Like, so I said to him, like, but you're not... Oh, flipping burger fork. Oh, don't... Don't. What are you doing? Why'd you get a neck tattoo? I mean, that's going to just make it difficult for you to have a career after this one. Not impossible. Just, it's very, it's very, it's on both sides of the neck. It's a very impressive goal. I'm just jealous. I want to have you on my team, Kennedy, but I can't afford a player like you. Oh, jeez. It's really you know, this game isn't perfect because all of the game mechanics are broken and arms go inside of legs and legs go inside of arms. They did a really good job with that neck tattoo. <laughs> so we've had a little bit of trouble, a little bit of trouble on that front. And that's been that's been difficult because like some of the guys feel like they're some of the guys who are starting and who are really key to us feel like, oh, my friend isn't getting enough play time. And like, you know, Mr. Managerino, why won't you pick my friend? And it's like because they're not good. Like, it, I, I, it's a professional football club, okay? It's not like a, this is this is not like a like a little league thing where everybody plays the same number of minutes. Like, are you good? Is the first question. You're getting you're not getting paid. You're getting paid to be a professional football player. Like, so I've been a little frustrated about that, and I, that's just a private thing though. Like, I would never say that to the boys, obviously. You know, uh, to the boys, I just say like things are going well. We're doing okay. And I'm so lucky to have John Green and John Green as leaders in the locker room. Like, they are, they're just both such people of, um, they're just so hardworking, they're so committed, they're so dedicated. And because, like, they, so it's weird for them because people who are longtime fans of this show will know that they are time lords and they 
basically get into a TARDIS and, and, and enter into like a completely different uh, moment in time and space every time we uh, buy a new game of FIFA. That's why I haven't done it in a few years because they've been enjoying this, uh, this particular universe and they haven't been that psyched about the prospect of going to like going back and going into a different universe again. And they often feel like they're kind of having to start over like new teammates and everything. And I totally get that. And this has been a good gr group of people aside from Rafo. Uh, it's been a good bunch, and so I, I understand like wanting to stay with, um, you know, wanting to stay with people you 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 love and you've come to respect and see as your teammates. And ball, oh my God, ball, John Green almost just scored a magnificent goal. But they've got Thibaut Courtois, who back in 2018 was a very good goalkeeper. Um, now I'm going to not score from a corner kick for the 87th consecutive. T I, I almost had to eat my words, but only almost for the 87th consecutive time. So it's so helpful to have them in the locker room because they're just like great influences in general and like really fun, nice people. And John Green has scored a goal, unless I was offside. He's sniffing as if he was offside. Can I see a replay, please? I mean, really? Really? That's like the Premier League this season. Where it's like, oh, so I guess football isn't going to be fun anymore. Great. Just just what I always dreamed of. I've always wanted to play a game where um, <laughs> it's mostly about lining up lines pixel by pixel and pretending that we can have any level of precision when it comes to the movement of human bodies as captured by pixels. Anyway. I'm getting, I'm off on a tangent. In general, the season's been really good. Morale has been really good. And the whole reason that, like, we're still in FIFA 18 is because the John Greens feel so strongly about winning something with this team. Like, they don't want to just uh, win. Like, obviously, you know, I mean, they, they, are, they are massive, massive Wimbledon fans. And, like, uh, that's obvious from the fact that they, uh, you know, are, have both played with AFC Wimbledon, even though they were really good and they could have, they could have played for any team. They've stayed with Wimbledon now for, you know, I think six or seven years. And, um, and so that, that's been a huge part of, of their story is just their love for the club and their commitment to making it better. And now they feel like this season, there is a real, aside from the fact that we're getting absolutely gobsmacked by Chelsea, there is a real chance to win something. And like, they really want to. And so I, if anything, like I'm, I, you can, there's, there's a little like sense of like, almost like desperation. Like when you want something too much in life, sometimes it can, it cannot happen because you just get so focused on it. And so I've been trying to get the guys to focus not so much on results as on process. Like, I don't, I don't really care if we win a game or lose a game. I care, like, are we playing like, oh God, that was just not what I intended to do, obviously, in the last second of the first half. I, so that's a moment where, like, I got very focused on results, not on process. But whereas if I was focused on process, I would be like, no, that was good build up. We were along the wing. We were doing everything I want to do. You know, obviously, we gave up a goal in the third minute. Super annoying. It wasn't a good goal. But, like, so what I, what I would say or what I am saying right now to the guys in the locker room is, like, look, we're down 1-0. We're at home. This is one of the best teams in England. Three years ago... In League One, four years ago in League One, who could have imagined a situation where we would be down one nil to Chelsea at halftime? Like this is great. Let's turn this. Let's 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 see what we can do with this. You know, if if uh, if we'd performed the way that the game expected us to perform with a bunch of guys who have 67 skill levels we would never be in this spot in the first place so this is this this is an opportunity no pressure i've just been trying to take pressure off the boys because i feel like sometimes they just they want it so badly and like you it it, it almost kind of stops them up it also it slows them down it makes them worry and think twice about their quick decision making and what makes especially with the john greens and i'm i'm making this argument to them all the time um, what makes them great is their instinctive decision making. Like they have that like, you know, 200 football IQ that somebody like Roberto Firmino has. And we don't need 
we don't need you to overthink it. Like, you know what you're, you know, you. this is why you've trained for 30 years. Like, you know exactly what to do in this situation. There's John Green. There's John Green. He knows what to do in this situation. Oh, I mean, this might be the French person I'm most angry at right now in the whole world. I'm trying to think if there's any other French person I really dislike at the moment as much as I dislike Thibaut Courtois with his phenomenal saves, his great hair, and his tall, lanky body. Sorry, I got off topic. Come on, boys. We can do something. Mm, okay, we're going to make some substitutions. I, I I know that it hasn't been working, but I believe so much in the 4-3-3. Like, I believe so much in this false nine formation. I just, I, I, I really, I can't help myself. I'm going to bring on Omar Sin, son of Omar. Is there any way I can strengthen the midfield? Mm, maybe I take off Lua Lua and I bring on Vinny Thrill. Vinny Thrill's had a pretty good season, so like, I don't know. There's a chance that something good could come of this, but first we've got to defend a corner kick, which is admittedly not our specialty, but they made it pretty easy there. However, we are still we still have a problem. There's Vinny Thrill on the ball. There's Omerson, son of Omar. And there's... Go! That was pretty good. It could have been a little bit better. And if it had been a little bit better, John Green would have been in. But it wasn't. And so instead, we're in this situation. Shoot! Off! 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 Go! Oh, Anoma, you've got to shoot there, my man. That's like... So that's one thing that we've been going back and forth with, with Anoma, is just like that... That... It's... When you're in front of goal, it's again, it's that nervousness. It's that feeling of like, oh, oh God, like, like we could be tied with Chelsea if we just don't, you can't, don't think that. Like you, sometimes when you're at the top of the table, like we are right now, it just leads to, just, it just leads to bad decision making like we just saw there. And so that's been my, uh, it's just been a big frustration for me the last few games and trying to work on it in training, but it is not really a, uh, it's not really a training problem. It's a psychological problem. That was a very good save from Rafa. And I know that I'm critical of him. But that was impressive. I am going to take off Anoma. I just, he hasn't had a great season in general. He's a good player, and I and he's young, and I know he's going to be great someday. Um, but I, I just think, like, right now we've just, we've got to find a way to get a goal. And, uh, and I don't know how we're going to do that. Except maybe by passing to the John, to a John Green to John Green connection. Come on. Come on, John Green. Ah, that was close. That was close. All right, we got 10 minutes to rescue something from this game. That was also close to making it work. We didn't quite wait for the run. Dean Parrott is not, like, he's a player who uh, has a lot of heart and not a lot of talent. Um, sorry, because I know Dean Parrott in real life listens to this, watches this show. So that uh, don't mean that personally. Okay, go. Go. All right, there's Dean Parrott on the ball. Just like I said, <laughs> it's not, not, the, not the through ball that I was looking for or that indeed a better player would have delivered. But that's okay. We can't give up hope. We've got to believe till the very end that we could get something from this game. And here we go. It's Omerson, son of Omar. He's cutting inside. Oh, it's really bad. Really, I should have found something to do with that ball. I couldn't see the run of ball, John Green. Couldn't see how we could, like, curve a ball to get in there. So now it's clear that Chelsea is just kind of killing time. I'm going to try to get it to ball John Green. That worked. Go. Oh, how did you not shoot? Is that the end of the game? It is. They're celebrating. Oh, one point from two games. We've got to get better, and it's psychological. It's all up here, guys. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.